Well, at least there is some progress. First of all, if the loans were to be at very favorable terms, that would still be a significant help to countries such as Italy, who at the moment borrow in markets at much higher yields that they have to pay than, say, Germany. So loans under good conditions would already be a significant help. A good element of grants on top of that would be another help. The good thing is that apparently yesterday EU leaders did not really disagree very much when it came to the overall principle. Instead, they tried to sound much more like there should be solidarity. We are making at least some progress over it. And this was much better than what EU leaders had communicated in the past, but it was largely about the still unresolved disputes rather than the overall direction. We want to help each other. Italy does seem to be the key because there was some reporting that the Italians did not want to tap the ESM, the recovery fund that stands uh, as part of the, the European budget to, to help out member states because there was some connotation with tapping that rescue fund after what had happened with Greece. We don't have corona bonds that was not put forward yesterday and there was no sort of general uh, appetite to, to have some sort of debt mutualization across the board. So what does that mean when we still have this ESM as the main mechanism for member states to tap? First of all, the ESM would be a mechanism to be used pretty much this year, you could say, kind of a bridge until we have the bigger recovery fund. With Italy now being much more satisfied, apparently, with the overall direction of the debate, it is now possibly easier for Mr. Conte, the Italian Prime Minister, to get a domestic consensus for actually going to the ESM, ideally with some other countries, so that there is less of a stigma effect. So the improved political climate in Europe, you could say, is something that could help to use the ESM tool. And on top of that, I would say Italy should be quite happy that the overall direction is moving in the way of substantial support down the road, even if, of course, this is Europe. Details take quite some time. Uh, yes, quite some time. That's very near my next point, Holger. Very good morning to you. Can we just confirm then for all our viewers watching and for the international community that every ounce of debt which is added to countries and to sovereigns' books now will still be with us in a decade or maybe two decades or three decades' time? Because let's face it, not one uh, cent, euro, whatever you want to call it, of debt that was added in terms of debt to GDP, to the Italian books, to the Greek books from the last financial crisis uh, has been diminished yet, i.e. we came into this crisis with 130% debt to GDP in Italy, 180% in Greece, uh, and these figures are going to be much bigger on the back of these recovery efforts and are going to be with us for decades to come, yeah? Well, the debts will, of course, be significantly bigger, but now that we have a serious contribution going through the EU budget, some of that debt will, whichever way you want to call it, be joint debt, that is debt guaranteed by the European institutions, which are guaranteed by member states. This entire debate about corona bonds, rather national debt, in my view, is to some extent a little weird, because we are now going down the route towards some kind of joint borrowing through the EU lar largely, which, whether you want to call it corona bonds or not, is basically that it is debt that's but, but jointly guaranteed and hence much easier for Italy to bear.